Me na I start to smile. She said, "Today, Sarah Network and a Swiss hotel concerning the media training where the Sierra Leone Ministry of Health and Sanitation with a partner Speak Up Africa get with media practitioners them on Alpha report on malaria. Now we're going to the all who say the training they take place. Are we still sleeping? Good morning, colleagues. Good. Morning. Good. That sounds better. I'll bring you greetings from the leadership of the Minister of Health and Sanitation. As you may be aware, we are all here today for the launch of the Malaria Media Coalition to motivate media practitioners to intensify the fight against malaria in Sierra Leone and Africa as a whole. Zero, Zero Malaria Start With Me campaign is now a Pan-African movement that builds solidarity and multi-sectoral collaboration to eradicate malaria by 2030. On this note, without wasting much time, as we are far behind schedule, I want to welcome you all. I know we are represented here by 15 different and if you welcome, we welcome to this famous family very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kadi. So now we have three guests at the high tables. So I would like to call upon the director of this prevention and control to give us a message. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Wani. Um, good morning, all. Good morning, all. Good morning, sir. Thank you. I'm sure we're not going to die. First, um, our moderator, our colleague, James, from Speak Up Africa. Um, point, um, the national coordinator of the National Reporters Network, and my colleague Dr. Twin, and all the invited journalists, guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor to have the opportunity today to be one of those to set the scene for a key component Zero Malaria Start to Be campaign at the launch of the Media Coalition. I would like to welcome all of you and invite you guys to this August location with the aim to energize talented journalists who have been informed are coming from all the 16 districts in Sierra Leone. So there is an issue of equity which is very relevant in our operations. And to create a platform through which journalists can collaborate and productively engage with the important societal issue that we are facing the fight against a preventable and treatable disease called malaria. You know, I want to begin by asserting that this occasion comes at a very significant time. Why is it significant? Though there are many reasons, perhaps I can pick just a few for the sake of time. First of all, as we all know, we had the MDGs before, Millennium Level Goals, that phased out December 31st, 2015. We provided a backbone for focused national and international interest in malaria. They were actually replaced by the SDGs that look to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all of the ages at the top line health goal. The sad reality of the recent outbreak of Ebola in West Africa have we awakened an understanding that health and the health system strengthened cannot be assumed or taken for granted, particularly when faced with a shock of that nature 
and has reinforced the need for a more holistic approach. Many thought that malaria is an health issue, but definitely we have to go beyond the health sector. We want to aggressively reach our set targets and goals in LGBT malaria. In the period of uncertainty, which we are now facing, because you know, a lot of our traditional international funders are now revisiting their funding strategies. And there have been some evident uncertainty about where it will all end. So we are now faced with the challenge in funding gap to aggressively accelerate our fight against malaria and other diseases. So we need to think out of the box and look within and mobilize the required resources um, to fight the disease. So domestic funding is very, very critical. And for FACO, um, partnership funding is a prerequisite to actually acquire resources from a lot of partners, including the Global Forum, PMI, World Bank, and the like. You know, um, the WHO came up with a document they call the Global Technical Strategy, which actually giving us a direction from 2016 to 2030, with grand milestone, targets, and objectives. So we have a task to ensure that come 2030, Sierra Leone will have slashed our baseline in terms of deaths and illness by 45%. It's a daunting task, but cannot alone. We need partnership. So this particular occasion is very important that we have been using, of course, the media houses. Some people are very familiar. We used to see actually once a year, the one promotion of one Malaria Day. But I'm quite sure with the launch, we will now see ourselves very often in the area of partnership and collaboration. Um, you know, I would, I would like to emphasize here that a lot of things have been done certain stories, but the point is, we still have challenges. The task is yet unfinished. We, we know that things will go backwards if we let them go. What I mean actually mean is, for us to sustain the gains, we have to continue the fight. We have to invest in malaria. We need partnership and the uptake of the services should be announced and strengthened. We still have to see that a child is dying approximately every minute for malaria. Ten years back, we used to see a child is dying every second. That is no longer the case. But unfortunately, a child should not really die. No one should die because malaria is treatable and preventable. I hope that if we are to bring this statistic to the attention of the globe, for the first time now, this will remain shocking and be sufficient to steer all relevant stakeholders to action. Um, this is very important for journalists because I know you like to make things very sensational, but a child should not die. And moving forward, I think we need to come up with that mostly that there should be zero deaths, zero deaths due to malaria. Entirely. That is very important. Insufficient progress have been made in getting the most vulnerable population to sleep out of bed nets. We have scaled up the use of bed nets. We have scaled up the access bed nets to the household and the vulnerable population. We have distributed millions and millions of bed nets nationwide. 2017, we distributed 4.3 million bed nets nationwide to households. And we are periodically reviewing the outcome of such intervention. The usage is increasing, access is increasing, especially to the vulnerable pregnant women and children under five years, and by extension to households. But we want to ensure that we achieve what we call universal coverage, minimum of 80 percent. We are very close, though, but with your support, I'm quite sure we will really amplify the benefits of sleeping on that bed net regularly and properly, and it should not be misused 
by selling debts, among others. And for information, in fact, I would like to use the opportunity to inform you that come May this year, we'll be distributing 4.6 million bed nets. So we are actually replenishing or replacing the nets that were distributed because according to science, 50% of the nets that are distributed in 2017 are already gone. They are already gone, okay? So we're going to replace them with 4.6 million bed nets. I'm sure we need to support in that direction to ensure that people access the vouchers. Then in April and in May, they will use the vouchers for the exchange of the vouchers to bed nets. And by exchange on, it's not only distribution. When you get the bed nets, the question is what next? We have to ensure that the big sheet of the bed nets. The usage is very, very, very important. Um, I would not like also to see that the parasite and mosquito continue to be evasive enemies, mutating and or developing resistance. What we are taught in schools, mosquitoes will breed in clean, clean, stagnant water, not dirty water. That's why Western Nigeria they have the lowest malaria prevalence of six percent. The highest is for local fifty eight percent. So therefore, but we are now doing a lot of studies to really understand the behavior of the mosquitoes. Science will tell us that mosquitoes do rest indoor and they also bite outdoor. I mean so they also bite indoor. But now we have, we have four certain sites in the country, Bo Kono, Makenia, Western Nigeria, we are actually tracking over time. So we have done the bio assay with the mosquito, and we have realized that the biting time is changing, the resting habit also is changing. Now they rest outdoor and also they rest indoor. They bite outdoor and they also bite indoor. So we have to change our strategy to ensure that our people are protected. So they are mutating. And we're also not trying to also study the mosquitoes. Well, indeed, they only breed in clean, stagnant water. Because evidence from other countries is still not that mosquitoes are now also breeding in stagnant, dirty water. But we don't have that in our own context, so it's off record. What I would say is, from our own evidence, we have we talk, I mean, substantial evidence that mosquitoes, they get indoor and the right the, and the rest outdoor. And um, we also did a study to know the resistance of the four classes of insecticides prescribed by WHO. That's why this time around we have added a synergist to the pilot world standard net that will be distributed in May this year. So it's more effective, more efficient but by and large, the existing nets are equally effective and efficient. And the health system's weaknesses is critical. So malaria will never achieve the set goals and objectives without addressing the health system. What do I mean by that? If you have unmotivated health workers, if you have shortage of health workers, both in quantity and quality, will not address the malaria issues. If there's an issue with the supply chain system, from the first mile to the last mile, there's body stock out at the last mile, the clinic in your village, in my village, definitely will not interrupt the transmission. If we also have issues with social people chain and communication, which is why the definitely you come in to tell the people the benefits of some of the cost-effective interventions, the tools that we have that have been proven to be effective for them to the uptake of the services and to do the benefits of the services will surely won't get there. So the Social Biblioteca Commission is very, very critical 
this is where definitely we need to partner with you guys and the launch of this coalition is of utmost important. Having said that, so moving forward, what do we plan to do as a ministry, as a program? Currently, we are reviewing, reviewing the program and we call it the Malaria Program Review. We have external evaluation, evaluators from the BHO they are currently with us in Twitter for the past three weeks to so review to know the weaknesses and the strength of the existing strategic plan spanning from 2016 to 2020 to know whether our activities, our objectives are actually in line and what could be done to strengthen the next generation of a strategic plan spanning from 2021 to 2025. And for information, the next strategic plan will be titled National Elimination Strategic Plan. The current one is National Malaria Control. So there's a, con there's a little bit of control and elimination. Currently, in our objectives, we actually try to improve access. What do we access? Accessibility in terms of geography. I should not walk beyond three or five kilometer radius to access a health facility. That's now the health system component, which we leverage on other, other partners and of course the Ministry of Health championing the, 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 the drive. And also financial accessibility. Malaria, as we know correctly, is free for all age groups. But someone would like to ask what is free in the free? Free treatment. Free diagnosis when you have the or microscopy to confirm whether it's malaria because fever is not malaria. So, but the point is, if you go for prompt treatment, you avert the complicated cases, which we call severe malaria. Severe malaria will require blood transfusion, etc., etc. It will be the indirect cost of the patient from home to the hospitals and back. So that's why we are now really advocating for prompt treatment, <coughs> feel on well with fever, visit the nearest health facility, facility, especially for the vulnerable groups, pregnant women and children. Within 24 hours, you prevent severe malaria. That is very, very important. So we have a lot of things moving forward, but I won't bore you at this point in time, but to go along in the uh, next presentation, there will be a presentation when that will be detailed. Um, I mean, said that, I would also like to once more thank you for coming and following our invitation. And by extension, I would like to acknowledge few people that made this launch happen. I would first of all like also to give a big round of applause to James from Speaker Africa. <laughs> and James, welcome once more and thanks. And by extension to the IBM Partnership to Help Malaria, there have been, I mean, Sarah Long, of course, happened to be among a few countries, I think we are now the seventh or eighth country to have this coalition, which is very, very important. And by extension, we have other activities to engage the paramount chiefs, the parliamentarians, and other major stakeholders. We will also need to mobilize the resources within we call domestic funding, which is very critical. And where is domestic funding? Does it mean only from government? Even for big guys who are still in the village, they could be reached out, say, look, what can you do for your community? And this has not been done in many other countries. But to go along, we learn from experiences in other countries and try to replicate it in our context. Um, so by also, I'd like to also, she's here, going down here, I mean, the mayor of uh, Fulton City. She's um, an ambassador. Um, you know, now the Robert Malia is also engaging um, mayors in Africa. So she happens to be the mayor of the vital representative all the chairmen of councils and mayors in Sierra Leone. I'm sure during, before the end of the day, she'll be here for the panel discussion. I'm sure she'll make a statement. And there are other partners who are actually involved in this arrangement, the IBM partnership. Um, but so Malaya is a real partnership, it's not a one man's business. So we need to partner straight in with the uh, media houses to ensure that we reach out to all the beneficiaries. You know, we did a partner mapping some time ago, a couple of years, over three years. We are now trying to review it. We realize that partners that are operating at this level are 
I'm not giving one hundred percent coverage. Say for example, you go to Bobo with fifteen chief dogs. Fact that we only operating in six of these chief dogs. So we normally call them tarmac partners. They want ease of access. Forgetting that, based on our statistics, the prevalence is high in the rural areas. This is where we need to take the messages. So I'm very happy that um, um, I've heard that all of you are coming from the 16 um, districts, and by extension, I hope we increase the coverage. The third time, among others, to ensure that we take the message out to our partners. And I'm still to be busy media on our radar, you know, people are partnering with taking the messages, engaging at that grassroots level. Because the health system, what is critical is the community systems. Community systems for health is so important. We have to empower the people out there. So it's like a bottom top approach. I'm sure with your partnership, we should achieve that. So I would like to thank you once more, and I hope we have a very fruitful deliberation and successful launch. Thank you. I don't think that one is enough for his director. <laughs> Let's give him more hand. <laughs> so I will now call upon James Warren to come and give us his remarks on behalf of Speak Up Africa and RBM Secretariat. Hello, good morning. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming uh, from near and from far. I understand uh, some of you had to travel quite some distance to get here. Uh, just to introduce myself quickly, my name is James uh, Wallen, uh, the Malaria um, Program Officer at Speak Up Africa, which is a strategic communications and advocacy organization based in Senegal. And we're working with the, uh, the NMCPs, and partners in Ghana and Sierra Leone on the Zero Larry Starts With Me campaign. Um, before I, I make a few, uh, a few remarks, I'd like to thank, first of all, um, the NMCP, Dr. Smith, Dr. Ture, Sister Wani, um, and the rest of the NMCP team uh, for a very fruitful partnership so far and a, and a great collaboration, and we're really looking forward to working with them uh, over the next year. Uh, I'd also like to thank Mr. Bandy and the team from the Health Reporters Network, uh, who were instrumental in uh, developing the, the guest list for today and for engaging all of you and ensuring such a fantastic turnout to this event. Uh, I'd also like to thank my, my colleague Aminata Khan, uh, who's also here to represent Speak Up, who, who's here based in Freetown. Myself, I'm, I'm coming from Senegal. Um, and, and lastly, the, the members of the technical working group for the campaign who represent a, a wide variety of partners. Um, and uh, thank you so much for, for everything you've done so far. Um, and yes, once again, most of all, thank you so much to, uh, to all of you, the journalists who made the effort to come, who have shown uh, dedication and commitment, uh, both to your profession and to the cause that we're here to, to fight for. Uh, the elimination of malaria by 2030. Uh, so thank you all, it's such an honor to, to be with you today. So why are we here? Why this, this Malaria Media Coalition? Um, fundamentally for us, we're, we're uh, Speak Up Africa is an advocacy communications organization and we know that the media, journalists, are vital partners in any advocacy campaign because you drive the national conversation, you raise awareness at the community level, you increase engagement and uh, help communities to really um, take responsibility for their own, uh, for their own, um, their own health and well-being. You also have the ability to impact uh, the influencers and decision makers, which is what advocacy is all about, through your coverage. And you can also help with political accountability and really ensuring that the people who are elected to represent us, to represent all of us, really follow through with the commitments that they've made um, in government to having malaria by 2023 in this case and, by, and to eliminate malaria 
by 2030 and ensuring that the resources are made available for that to happen. Zero Malaria starts with me as a campaign, also fully recognizes the importance of partnership and of collaboration. And really the core of the campaign is about engaging all sectors of society, uh, from politicians to the private sector, to communities, to the media, to civil society, and finding, creating new structures um, and platforms for people to come together and discuss how we can finally put an end to malaria, which affects, I think, every single one of us in some way, or has done at some point. We know that reaching zero malaria by 2030 won't be easy, but it is possible if we focus on what unites us, good health, well-being, opportunity for ourselves and our communities, and if we each take responsibility in any way that we can for the fight against malaria. I hope that you will all leave here today knowing and believing as I do that the Zero Malaria Starts With Me movement is important and inspiring to people to really take that step, take the responsibility, declare Zero Malaria Starts With Me, and finally to find a way together to reach the goal of elimination of malaria by 2030. Um, thank you all, I'll leave my, my comments there. I'll be, I'll be uh, speaking a little more later on. Uh, but again, once once again, thank you, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much. Can we give him a big round of applause? Are you not happy for him? You are here for happy happy. It was deliberate. I, I left Mr. Badi to be the <laughs> the third speaker. Yes. So I now invite Mr. Fanny to come and give us his remarks on behalf of the journalist. I've already spoken to that yes. 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 All right, good morning all. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. And um, I want to say that um, all the speeches from the previous speakers we are very much marvelous and inspiring and I think we all know why we're here and why we should take this training very serious. My full names are African Oswali Hokubai Binya Garuma and Vandi. But just call me Mr. Vandi anyways. Um, coordinator of the Health Reporters Network. I'll start by telling you about the network briefly and why we actually decided to have this network. The Health Reporters Network Sierra Leone has its motto as Better Health Through Media, which tells you that we care about the health of Sierra Leone and we are willing to give our best in ensuring that we have a better health system. Now we formed this network because over the years we realized that journalists who report on health only go after event-based stories. What I mean by that if the minister is going to open a health center today, you see a host of journalists chasing them to go there. You see CRS handing over to it to the ministry. Everybody goes there. That is event-based journalism. But after that, do you monitor those health centers to ensure that the facilities there actually reach the right beneficiaries? Do you monitor and report if the free health care medicines are actually going there and they are reaching the right beneficiaries, we don't. We only follow politicians, they launch and they give us tokens and we go away. And so this network was formed to ensure that yes, 
journalists move away from event-based reporting to human interest stories. Go into communities, use your own resources, dig into stories, and report them. You might see it to be very costly, but I tell you, they mean a lot. We've done many over the years, and we've seen the impact. That was why we decided to come together to form this network. It wasn't easy. We are sober-minded executive members who we are actually active in the genesis of this entire episode. Kemo Cham with our PR was very instrumental. Is he on? Yes, I am. Mr. Cham, yeah. just wave your hand so that people can see you. Jonah Sisi, I call him the bank moon of this particular organization. Where is Jonah? Even at night, you will send me emails. Brano's Lipo will not understand it. He has been very, very much instrumental. The Iron Lady, Richard Williams. Is she around? She keeps our finances. She is the treasurer of this organization. You need it more than you know to Yes. All right. And then, um, Khadija Jalo, are you around? Yeah, All right. And a host of others, if I do not mention your name, I know um, Admire is over there and there. But all of us have been very much instrumental to ensure that, yes, we have this organization form. We used to meet on Sundays at the beach. We do not pay anybody to come there, but um, they use their own resources to come. And today, we have this network functioning. When I was first contacted by the Public Relations Office of the Ministry of Health and Sanitation, Solomon Rogers, about this project, Speak Up Africa, I never took it serious. But again, the gods were coming. And then I realized, oh, Solomon means something serious this time round. And I was linked up to Aminata, and of course my sister here. <laughs> you mentioned my name last two, I have to mention you last two. <laughs> but anyways, she actually ignited everything. And then Amnata was also one kind of person who would not sleep if what she wants had not happened. And so she kept calling, she kept sending emails. And then we actually, as an executive, met for the very first time at my office and we discussed this entire uh, project. That was when we started contacting all of you in the provinces to ensure that yes, all of us are here today. Um, so, if we are here today, we have been told why we are here. Our expectations from you is not just to have this training done today. You go to your various districts and forget about the fight against malaria. This is a project that is going to run for the entire year. And as an executive of the Health Reporters Network, we will ensure we monitor you guys to the fullest to ensure that you deliver well. And of course, I am quite very much confident of the team that is here. You are not selected out of any favoritism, but you are selected because we think you can deliver the best. On this note, can you please clap for yourselves? All right. This means when you go home, we should not be calling you. We have not seen the story. You have not reported. We expect you guys to be calling us. Did you watch our news? Did you listen? Have you read the papers? And you send your reports as expected. Otherwise, you will be deceiving us. Some people call me a politician because I talk a lot, but I'm a journalist anyway. <laughs> and so, in the summary, I want to say thank you to James. I remember the first time we had a meeting on the phone. It was over an hour. And I had to tell him, my battery don't die. <laughs> now then he said, okay, um, just, 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 just a few more minutes. And that few more minutes took another 30 minutes. So my battery was like 1%. And I said, James, I'm switching off my data. <laughs> but anyways, that tells you how serious we are in ensuring that this little country in this continent, Africa, called Sierra Leone, is actually free from malaria. We have been reporting it without being monitored, but this time round, 
We are going to be monitored to ensure that, yes, we deliver the best. On this note, I want to assure James and, of course, NMCP and the rest of others who are here that are the journalists who are present for this training are the best and they will deliver their best. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bandi. Uh, now I will now call upon Mr. Koko K to come and energize us. All right. I don't know when they call my name and they say to come and energize people, somebody will be thinking that he's going to serve us with energy drink. I want to disappoint you at this point in time. Clap for yourselves. <laughs> Clap for yourself. I have a few comments I want to make before I perform my function. Uh, in the first place, I want to thank all our, our high children. Uh, people who are giving their statements and uh, it shows that there is a kind of commitment and I also appreciate the statement of the coordinator to the reporters. I mean, this is my first time of hearing journalists pledging themselves to see that they support the health service in this country. Because over the years, all we used to see or hear is that journalists go to find faults and the magnanimate on it. Due to cases that make issues and make reports. But I'm happy that this time they are partners in the system. Clap for yourselves again. And I want to be, I want to be clear and here, I don't know whether you can accept me. I want to be a member of the health reporters uh, network. Yeah, and the reason is, do you know the reason why? For the fact that you are holding your meetings around the beach. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> so, at any time you are going to number two, please let's give you a phone. Yeah, and I'm going to the beach too. <laughs> These guys are tall. A uh, few announcements also, the big one. If you know you want to answer to nature's call, you can just come to the back of the building and organize yourself. I hope I'm clear. Also, another one. I know many of us want to go to the United States, or maybe, but I know I want to be there. Who also wants to go to the United States? You can wave your hand. <laughs> okay, people don't like to go to the United States. Okay, so I know you like to be in Senegal. Fine. But if you see that we are going very close to the United States, and sometimes you find it difficult, please get us informed. Because my fear is. If we reach the United States, our next trip would be we're going to Russia. And uh, for some people, especially people like you who don't want to go anywhere except Sierra Leone, by the time we arrive in Russia, you will get to hello. So no false life. If you know it's getting too cold for you. <laughs> You are calling invited to just address us and especially the journalists who are going to be the advocates, the reporters of malaria. So when they hear the sweet voice of a woman, then they know we mean business, the new direction. And we are going to show we want to 2030 with no malaria in Sierra Leone. You are welcome, man. Thank you very much, Cosmita. Good afternoon. Hello. Hi. Everyone's had a big lunch yeah. and you're falling asleep now. But we have to wake up so that we can talk together about malaria. I understand that you've been specially chosen and actually asked the question, how was this decision made about who would come to this session? We have thousands of journalists in this country but there's just about a hundred or so of you here in this room. So I wanted to know how you were chosen. And what I was told was that they looked out 
through the ministry, the education department, SLAD and other institutions, they looked out for people who are the most committed and dedicated. So I'm really pleased to be talking to a group of people who've been recognized as clearly the right people to take a very important message to the rest of the country. You've been here for a couple of hours already. And I know that in this time, you would have heard some statistics. But let me just put a couple of other numbers on the floor. I may be repeating what's been said before, but nevertheless, I think these numbers, these, this data, is important enough for you to hear it again. Around the world today, today is Thursday the 6th of February, 1,100 people will die because of malaria. It happens every day. Every two minutes, children under the age of five, a child under the age of five, dies of malaria. In Sierra Leone, our outpatients department, and I know that you know this is true because pretty much all of us would have experienced that. 2.24 million people a year will be in the outpatients department at your local hospital, at your PHU, at a pharmacy, at a clinic to seek treatment because of malaria. And of that number, one million of them will be under the age of five. Around the world, 90% of the malaria prevalence is in Africa. And Sierra Leone as a country actually has, is considered to have one of the highest burdens of malaria. I've already mentioned that the under fives are particularly vulnerable. And when you look at the national picture, you see that if you're living in the rural area, and I know this is a national gathering, how many people in this room are not from Freetown? Can I see your hands? Okay, so the vast majority. So if you're outside of the urban setting, the malaria prevalence is at about 50%. It's much lower in urban settings, about 25%. And here in Freetown, it's the lowest in the country, at just 6%. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't matter in Freetown. Because when you look at the numbers, 15% of our population in this country lives in Freetown. So 6% of 15% becomes a big part of our population. And why does this matter so much? Clearly it matters because we don't want people dying unnecessarily. But beyond that, we all in this room have had malaria at some point. Is that true? Yeah. Is there anybody in this room who's not had malaria? James, <laughs> you don't count. But every one of us, Sierra Leoneans, would have had malaria at some point. And what's the impact of having malaria? It means that you're off work or you're off school. Generally, we are less productive. And when you're a country that's trying to develop, productivity matters a lot. So many times you're at work and people say, I not feel me, buddy. You know that expression? I not feel me, buddy. Your ability to function and to actually contribute positively to the GDP of our nation reduces. And when a large percentage of us are in that position, it really holds our development back. So malaria matters because it touches us so easily. So what are we going to do about it? The Zero Malaria Campaign is something I'm proud to be associated with. I was invited to Paris on World Malaria Day last year and I joined a platform with mayors from francophone countries in Africa. Um, and they had started, the Zero Malaria starts with me. I've been asked to champion that for Anglophone, for Commonwealth mayors. And I am really, really thrilled 
to have the privilege to do so. Because I know what malaria is costing us as a nation. I know what it's costing us as a city. And I certainly am committed to putting an end to it. So someone might ask, as the mayor, where do you and malaria connect? Well, we connect because of the reasons I've already described. The, the why. The what is wrong. Why does it matter? But we also connect on the how, when it comes to how we can address it. Because malaria, as I'm sure you're hearing, is not just about taking tablets. It's not just about using bed nets. Those things are very, very important. And they shouldn't be minimized. But there are really easy things as well which impact malaria or impact our ability to prevent malaria. Because malaria is preventable. It has a vector. Who gives us malaria? And I'm calling it who. Look at that. Hit there. Who's the naughty person giving us malaria? Mosquitoes. And what do they like? What do they like? They like human blood, but before they get to your blood, they have to get born somewhere, don't they? And where do they get born? Stagnant water. And where do we see stagnant water in our communities? In blocked drains, in clogged gutters, in pools around unhealthy areas, in plastic sachets where someone was drinking their water, didn't finish it, and left it on the ground. The mosquito doesn't need a lot of water, just a teeny bit. So your water sachet that you drop along the road can itself become a home for some new mosquitoes to be born. So when we talk about preventing malaria, it really can come right down to us and the decisions we make every day. And those decisions around sanitation probably have a bigger impact on the end story that most of us realize. As you walk along the streets and you drop that water sachet, which if you live in Freetown, who lives in Freetown? So if you live in Freetown, you know the mayor is obsessed, totally obsessed, and I'm not hiding it, obsessed with sanitation. That plastic that you dropped is a danger not only to yourself, but to others. So as we go through this program, and as you become the ambassadors, that's why you were chosen. My message as a malaria champion, and zero malaria starts with me champion, is a simple one. In Freetown, we have embarked on an ambitious program called Transform Freetown. It has four clusters and 11 priority sectors. Those sectors include health and sanitation. But it's not in health that we're tackling malaria. It's in sanitation. We are consciously working to ensure that we create an environment where malaria is less prevalent because mosquitoes are less comfortable. In order for us to do that, you have a big role to play as the media. We need a behavior change in our city and probably in our country. For those of you who are not from Freetown, because this, this is a national appeal. A behavior change because people have become accustomed to be disposing of waste in an unsanitary manner. They've been accustomed, become accustomed, and Freetown is particularly bad at that, at taking their garbage at night and dumping it in the gutter, leading to those block drains, which then lead to nice breeding grounds for mosquitoes, and therefore malaria, and therefore a million children under the age of five getting malaria, and therefore a child dying every two minutes. Can you see what your plastic bag is doing? Can you see what your water sachet is doing? Can you see what your decision not to dispose of your waste appropriately is doing. It has an impact that's significant. I can quickly say that in Freetown, we have developed a system, Find Me in Freetown, who knows Find Me in Freetown? 
Only two, three, four, okay. But five, good. If you don't know Find Me in Freetown and you have a phone with um, internet, go to www.findmeinfreetown.com. It's also an app in Google Store. You go on to that wherever you are in the city. You click, it will tell you your ward, and then you can click again, it will tell you everybody who collects waste in your ward. So we in Freetown are matching our waste service providers to our customers, to our residents, to make it possible for everyone to have their waste collected and safely disposed of so that we have less incidents of malaria because we have fewer mosquitoes. As media, as journalists, you can take that message to the rest of the country. You can say in Port Loco, in Moyamba, in Kono, in Pujahu, what are we doing in our locality to make sure we're reducing the opportunities for mosquitoes to breed? And for those of us who are in Freetown, let's make a personal commitment. I may be championing zero malaria starts with me, but those are just words. And you are here because you have been chosen as champions for the same cause. But again, we are just words. What we all need is action. What we all need are personal decisions, practical steps on a daily basis to do the things Promote the use of bed nets, promote the use of early treatments, promote the use of testing, promote sanitation. And with the sanitation, it really is easy because every day, the waste that we see around us is waste that someone has chosen to dispose of inappropriately. That someone might be you, but today, you have the opportunity, and I'm sure you're making the commitment for that someone no longer to be you. For you to be a part of ensuring that our environment is clean. So that's Wadi Creole for this year. Malaria in Don Juan, Dena Mi An. Malaria in Don Juan, Dena Yu An. And I want us all to commit to being practical and real. We don't just write about it. We live it. Thank you. Hello, welcome to this interview. I'm Jim Becklin, representing Tumak Radio. Okay, we see you the part of this um, N Malaria training where the media, where they call for media, and you're the part of the training. I want to make you tell me how you feel first for be part of this training. And I think, say, first of all, a pleasure and for participate or for come witness in such training where I believe say, Malaria do become. One of the sickness them we famous in the country, you know, as young kids, so many people them, so many innocent lives they don't go in, in regards to Malaya. I believe say I mean participate one inside this and uh, workshop or training or a launch in like, a very good one. So what do you learn? What do you gain from this training? And again so many things first of all in the in the aspect of the the facility side, the, the medical side and the hospitals them um, and we as and um, previous people um, we will go, we'll go there for good take information for good monitor the system and the the, the, the in charge of the tell you say we for going at dhmt or for going at ministry but uh, with this thing i don't can get a very much clear see uh, we get the opportunity now for and um, talk to them as previous people them um, for monitor them do interview na uh, the health facility them so that they will give information of how you know the various treatment they go in the aspect of the malaria and i also don't want to say you know they get free tests when they conduct the hospitals them then get free, free malaria treatment they will conduct the hospital them and also and um, on the way coming inside may we don't get some from the people them say they go for supply and bed nets them we get for the cross across the country and also other things as well we get for the malaria we are on today inside this particular session as you be the part of the health reporters union, what thing get for be your step next? Mm, uh, uh, step them beaucoup passé, you know. Do I go infuse, you know, because me as uh, a media practitioner, I believe say na me rule and responsibility for say I disseminate the message to people who they out there we na read the listeners them we I believe say you know I go use my platform as and uh, the media for broadcast 
and sensitize people about malaria, the thing that way they for do, you know, way for make for prevent for malaria, and the thing that way, you know, I believe say if they get malaria, they see sun and things some say they for go the far part way. Only thing they, I believe say I don't call and I believe say I go and implement that to the people with the list to me. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. Your name? Well, my name is Benjamin S. Conte from Focus 247 newspaper. Okay. And we see you the part of this uh, malaria media training today. I go on for make you tell we what do you make up of this training? Well, this training is fine, a nice training because like they try to sensitize us and we go out there to talk to people eh, concerning this malaria business. And because a lot of people eh, within the community, more the rural areas, eh, they don't take this sickness as important and serious sickness because when you meet short kind of people like you tell and say say I'm on Malaya and we say Abu na come on team because it don't be part of them. But like when this this program are just like an awareness when it can open your eyes because some of we back not can take this program serious but it don't can open your eye because we don't learn a lot and we will continue back for land because we just come off from break. So like we don't know how we go for go attack and how for report Malaya issue. So that people and we get them out there and then we take and see us just like how we take Ebola serious and we forget about Ebola because of we all knew the the the, the commitment of the program, the one way they organize the program and waiting and we don't talk say the one for target and end Malaya to 2020 30. So for that we as the media we all knew that now we are the voice of the people and we voice the go louder and saying so we want for try for come up with this issue that's why they engage us so we will go now with various committees because we so many and plenty now so we come from different media house so that when we go go when we only to corner we hope for fix this this problem because this is not a problem just like how we get Ebola where Ebola be create a, a so many cures same way as malaria so what for tell people eh, and open the eyes more like we mama and in a village you are in their upline area we know know about it then just know as a common thing maybe for an example then say if they suck Orange plenty, then we'll get nanny, something will count other perspective. But one for change that perspective because the people and don't call this thing now closer to we, they don't tell we waiting and waiting this thing can happen and how it disturb people. And the, so many cases don't happen, so many deaths don't happen through this. And we all knew more, especially Africa as a whole, we know one for take this thing skills and many things don't rampant. So, like this experience when we get now the training is so nice, it's so good. And everybody they, they enjoy a lot. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you too. Hello, welcome to this interview. Your name? Fatma Tameyan Tisei from Radio Baft, Sonkoleli District. We see you're part of this health, media health, um, um, media health workshop with Indonesia. So today, I go want to make you tell me what do you feel about this workshop. To me, the this training. Sorry. Okay, the training is timely. Looking to we country, the most sequel they affect we when a malaria, and this training they look at malaria. As media somebody, we don't they talk about malaria, ma malaria. But this training can help me say we not just for the look to events. We need for go beyond. We need for probe as journalists them. This training really, really, it's timely and helpful. So what do you make up of the story? This training here, so today, what you make up of them? Waiting and waiting and teaching them, we show as a different from what you be done. They know about the malaria sickness. One, I need for forget about um, events like whenever I program them, I don't know more, they go after that the end. But this training don't tell me say, as a journalist, I need for look into human interest stories them go to the community because the community then got plenty, plenty challenges them. Go then say, get them forms. When you look to the challenges, like we are there, for many people, they access health center, not a problem. Some working, even access the health centers, they also can go, get treatment, but the main problem, and when they finish the treatment, then some can start, as soon as he begin feel better, he relax. So this training also that helped me say, I need to do more as a journalist, for see how best we go to tap malaria in our community. So what in get for be your next step when you get for return now the south side you come out? Where I go, my first step now for do a community engagement. Now all the communities them where I feel say we radio they reach. Call if not the chief them because as a journalist first the office no more to roll for go na community, engage them people then they but for make we tap this particular sick year so I feel say we need for involve stakeholders them. 
let them put by laws and say anybody who is sick instead of you taking control medicine, let you go to the clinic. Go do tests, not just you don't know what you say, I don't sick but I'm malaria. Not describe or prescribe for yourself. For let you go to the hospital at the best I will go there, take information from them and see how best I go in, include them in the program. Especially way at the presenter program, normally in a health personnel, they normally count in a studio. But this time I will see, say, I take voices from the community, bring them to radio for make we make a change. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hello, welcome to this interview. You name? Yeah, thank you. Kadia Tutoli. From Usai? Advocacy ready, put local. Put local. Yeah. And we see you the part of this media, and malaria media training. And I want to make you tell me, what do you make up of this training? Well, the training is very much essential because we as media people and sometimes we can tend for get bad message out there where we don't get the understanding. Mind you, with this training, I don't learn a lot because we're not a media practitioner, we're not just journalists them. But with this training, we know some of the team them, uh, preventive measures then where we can put together so that we go stop malaria. So that while they go out there, when I sit down at the media, I go able to give me people the right information. So What's in terms of the message and where you go send out there for the right information that you they get the public? Yeah, one thing concerning malaria. Yeah, one thing first where I left for tell them is today na land for say na four back and types of bacteria they go give malaria. Well no where we know for saying we don't look at come, you know for saying our one. They are no feelings mosquito. Now you will believe on all we think. And I land for say today in the clean settled water. We believe for saying our dirty water and adult will be the Send out there. So now, now a time for me could we be as a change agent for disseminate the message out there, the right information, so that we don't reach a peak for can end malaria. We don't want for it to come back in that situation where people and me they worry about. So we don't reach that peak. The world for come together as one. We end this together so that malaria go down now. We can't get mama salon. And as we well, talk about malaria, we be not say tell me we can celebrate World Malaria Day. The Ministry of Health and Sanitation can give out bed nets to um, the whole country. And as health reporters, how you get for put up this story for CSA, the bed nets to um, where the Ministry of Health get for the distribute and go use them for the right purpose? The media and I one aspect to left for use, but me back left for put on my own effort for reach out there to the people them. Because if you can find out for say most of the people in the suburb areas, villages, no get time for radio monitoring, they go now family they go, and no get time for listening radio. So if you reach there as a media post, you begin tell them, then go begin no for say I back I get the rights for get the bed net. And people also know for say now only come right and picking they get free bed net. All b- other people them they go they go get down in it for say we not big people them governments not cater for we for this for the free health care so now Komara and picking the no more this na a training where I will learn for say all man entitled to the free bed net no matter the age no matter how you day you na man you na woman you entitled to one this na a one way where I go reach out to them communities then they so man go say na na we enter into the civil society as long as it's for the benefits for the country now for the country and we want for see for say we country go be zero malaria tomorrow we go I will definitely do one so that I will succeed for get out there the right message and so that i will be a civil servant towards me con- towards my country okay thank you very much welcome as the training video go on on a listen to different speakers them um, we talk about how for end malaria na the country by 2030 may we carry this program to na today may your name na isato smicey say until we meet again i say tata